I actually have a different approach to this, and I've seen a couple other painters talk about this too, is I really don't pay any attention to warm and cool colors. Welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. So if you have a question you want it answered, leave it in the comments section of this video, and I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. Now, if you are looking for full real-time painting video tutorials, I do offer those, but they are on my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. Also in the description below, I have Amazon links to all the supplies I suggest for beginners. And as always, if you like this video, if you like this channel, if you like me, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Now, that's all out of the way. Let's get to the questions. All right, now our first question comes from Dietra Dirmas. Uh, studio lighting for me. Uh, my paintings turn out overall a little darker than I want. Not dull, just darker. I can't really tell unless I take a picture of it or remove it from the room. All right, now studio lighting. This is a thing that I have been playing around with for a while. I'm always trying new things. Uh, so what I'm gonna be able to tell you is just things that I know have worked uh, for me. And the first thing I say is to figure out a way to get a light right above uh, your canvas. I got this light that I bought off Amazon. I'll put a link to where I got it in the description uh, below, but it's a great light. You clamp it onto something. It's got a bendable, adjustable arm. It's got uh, three different settings with three different color temperature lights. And the light that is hitting your canvas is very important, uh, especially the brightness or the temperature, because that's going to influence your colors. And I always try and get it as close to daylight as possible. Um, I haven't really looked that much into it. I don't know if other painters try and mimic uh, lights that would be in a gallery because in gallery they have certain lights that they put on it and I've seen paintings that are displayed in really warm light I've seen paintings that are displayed um, in like a really open uh, gallery with a lot of uh, natural lighting but I think your safest bet is to just try and get as much natural light as possible if you can paint in a room that has a lot of windows or paint next to a window that's great the only thing that you might be fighting when painting next to a window is glare because you can't move the window if you have a light to set up you can move the light which is why I like to have that adjustable arm light right above because I can I can move it around to get rid of glare in certain areas because glare in your painting while you're painting can, you know, kind of mess with you a little bit. And I especially have to worry about that when I'm filming my paintings. I have to worry about glare and recording. Also, then I'm aware that, you know, a lot of everybody's studio isn't exactly a studio. It's a corner in the room. You know, I've did that for many, many years. I had painted on a balcony for many, many years. And you just kind of have to do what you need to do to get the lighting you need. Um, if that means buying the slide off Amazon, if that means buying a uh, clamp light uh, from Home Depot and getting a uh, daylight or a natural light temperature bulb, um, do that. Do whatever you need. Just make sure you're not painting in the dark. Uh, make sure you do have adequate lighting. I know a lot of you have to paint at night time because you have jobs in your day and you come home at night and you paint. So in that case, lighting is very important and you're gonna wanna get um, a good light. All right, next question. All right, Clay Green says, uh, does anybody know a good place to get photos of landscapes to download for painting without copyright problems? Yes, I do know some. And the ones that I've gone to is Unsplash, Pixabay, and Pexels. And I'll put links in the description of this video to each one of those. That was a quick question, on to the next one. All right, so Elizabeth Haley says, how do you ventilate your art studio? Uh, well, I ventilate it by constantly having air moving in and out of my studio. I feel like that's the key thing to keeping the air clean in your studio, is always having that old air being pushed out and new air being pushed in, however you're gonna do that. I have a few fans that I have constantly pushing the air around, and also I just bought an air purifier. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. I like it, it's really quiet. I can't tell you for sure 100% that it's working because you can't smell or see fumes most of the time. So I'm assuming that it's taking all the fumes out. I keep it right next to me. I've seen this from a lot of other uh, painters. I've seen this on other art channels and uh, painting supply uh, companies talking about having uh, an air purifier in their studio. So I thought I'd try it out. 
I feel like the fear of toxicity with oil paints has blown a little out of proportion uh, because the paint companies nowadays have gotten so good at making them safe that like the paints themselves really aren't toxic at all. I've seen a lot of artists talk about how they aren't toxic. The things that you have to worry about are uh, is mainly what I have to worry about mainly is just my paint thinner. I do use odorless paint thinner from Gamsol, and apparently that is the most studio friendly uh, paint thinner. But it is still like it's still releasing fumes into the air, and I try not to get it on my skin as much as possible. Like it's not if you get it on your skin once or twice, like it's not going to do anything directly right then and there unless you you know specifically have an allergic reaction to it it's just like over the over the course of time like you know years and years and years if you're constantly exposed to it you can develop an allergy that's why like, i'll use um gloves some of the times just to cut down on my contact with it you know linseed oil that stuff's not toxic there are mediums that are toxic like liquid uh you want to be careful with liquid and um any varnishes if you do like, i do all my varnishing outside like, i don't even do that in the studio i do that outside so as far as the ventilation in your studio uh, i suggest just getting a few fans get some clean air coming in uh blow the bad air out if you can get a uh, air purifier that should help. All right, our next question comes from Lori Dill. It says, thank you for your tutorials. Really helpful. I have a question. What is the relationship between cool and warm tones and colors and painting? And how do you know when or where to use them? Mahalo. I'm guessing she's from Hawaii. And Hawaii is actually like the number one place in the world I would like to visit. I've never been outside of the country of America. And I know that Hawaii is technically still America, but I, that I really want to visit there. I was a huge fan of the show Lost. But your question, warm and cool colors. Uh, I actually have a different approach to this, and I've seen a couple other painters talk about this too, is I really don't pay any attention to warm and cool colors. And I don't suggest anybody starting out oil painting do as well, because I feel like warm and cool colors is a difficult thing to get your head around. When you're trying to mix a color or you're trying to match a color, uh, be thinking, does this color need more red? Does it need more blue or does it need more yellow? and naturally you will make the color the right temperature. All right, so I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, well, Chris, there's warm reds, there's cool reds, there's warm blues, there's cool blues, there's warm yellows, there's cool yellows. How do I know which one to do? All right, so let me give you an example of how this works. So if you are painting a red apple and that red apple, let's say, is a cool red, um, but the red that you have on your palette is cadmium red. It's a warm red. There's pretty much like two basic reds. I mean, there's a ton of reds, but you know, the main two I feel like are uh, cadmium red or Elizabeth crimson. I feel like most artists, they have a red on their palette. It's going to be one of those two. Your apple's cool, but you got the warm cadmium red. You don't need to think about making the uh, red on your palette cooler or warmer. You just need to think again, does it need more blue? Does it need more yellow or does it need more red? And so if you're looking at your apple, and you're looking at the color you got and you say, well, that apple, the color, that red apple has a lot more blue in the red than the red on my palette. So I'm going to get a little blue. I'm going to put it in my red. Now you're already inching closer to uh, the red of the apple. And you didn't need to think warm or cool. You just need to think blue, yellow, or red. And it, once you get the hang of that, you'll naturally dial in the right color temperature. And once you get a hold of that, color temperature will become more clear to you and it will make more sense to you. You'll kind of naturally pick it up. Like you really need to keep things as simple as possible, especially if you're you're starting out. I personally have never thought about warm or cool colors. I've just looked at a color and tried to match it the best I can. And by just, you know, does it need more red? Does it need more blue or does it need more yellow? And I feel like I've naturally dialed in the right color temperature just by doing that. And I've talked about this before, of just really understanding those base primary colors, the the blue, the red, and the yellow, like like that is the core of color mixing. Those like that is the most fundamental aspect of color mixing is the primary. So if you can paint a whole painting with just those and you can get to any color with this just those and you really understand them, it's going to give you such a strong foundation that when it does come time to get more specific with uh, warm and cool colors and, you know, secondary colors, tertiary colors, all this other stuff down the road, you'll have such a strong base and foundation that that stuff will come easily. But if you don't have the strong base foundation of the primary colors, all that extra stuff, which is good, like it is helpful, it, it's just not gonna come as easy because you don't have a strong foundation. So my recommendation, 
get those primaries, think of it that way. Think about does it need more blue, does it need more red, does it need more yellow, and go from there. Okay, next question comes from, and uh, I can't, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce this and butcher it, so I'm just gonna put it up on the screen. You guys can read the name. Uh, it says, hi, can I use only linseed oil for the painting without turpentine? That is adding more linseed oil to the bottom layers, blah, 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 blah. Oh, righty. Um, yeah, you don't have to use uh, paint thinner or turpentine, uh, anything like that. You can use just um, linseed oil, medium. I've seen plenty of artists do it. Uh, the way you, they clean their brush in between mixing colors is just wiping it on paper towels. You're probably gonna go through a lot of paper towels. Uh, I go through a lot of paper towels. Uh, yeah, you can totally do that. And as far as building the paint, you don't need to build it starting with turpentine. I've seen a lot of artists not do that. And yeah, you, you got it right. You know, just as you're building the paint thicker, you know, using less medium to make the paint thicker and, and all that stuff. So yeah, you can absolutely do it and it's done a lot. All right, our next question comes from Jane Julia. It says, when you layer paint from thin paint to one with medium to just paint, do you cover the whole piece with the new layers or just some of the previous layers show or be uncovered as way to have the gradient transition effect? Okay, yeah, so when I'm painting, I don't think so strictly in layers as it might seem. You know, I do start out with paint thinner and then I uh, gradually progress to using just uh, linseed oil and then I progress to using just straight paint. Um, but I by no means think like, oh, I need to cover the whole painting with just paint thinner paint and then just medium and then cover the whole thing with just straight paint. It's more of like, as I need it basis, you know, at the end of the painting, there are certain layers that are not as thick. There are certain layers that don't have medium on it. There are certain layers that do, some that have uh, really thick paint, others don't. It's just based off what I need. Like if I need to go over an area and thicken up the paint, I will. If I don't need to thicken up the paint, I won't. If I put, you know, in the beginning stages, if I lay down a uh, color or value, there's, you know, there is a chance that that will just stay there until the end of the painting. Um, it's not like a, you know, covering it all once and then covering it all the whole painting again with medium then covering the whole thing again with paint um it's not like that like i pick and choose and it's just kind of a as i need it thing and you know i'll bounce around too like i'll go back to paint thinner i'll go back to medium you know it's not like a very rigid process i talk about it in those stages just kind of as a guidance uh but it, it's you really just got to feel it out and it changes painting to painting so yeah that's what I do. Next question comes from Albatrez. Do you varnish all of your paintings or do you only varnish some? Well, I tend to pretty much only varnish paintings that I sell or commissions. Um, I guess just kind of out of laziness, like if I'm just doing a painting for me and you know it hasn't sold or anything like that, I'll probably just wait till it sells uh, to, to varnish it. But yeah, I like varnishing just because uh, one, it evens everything out in terms of if you have certain areas that you use more linseed oil than others, you know, certain areas can be shiny and certain areas can not be shiny. So it evens that out. Uh, it also brings back the colors, uh, especially darks. It brings back your darks a lot better. So I'll definitely do it for commissions and paintings that I've sold. All right, next question comes from Frank Burns. Hey, Chris, thanks for the tips. Question, how do I know if my brushwork is expressive or just plain sloppy? Well, I guess that's gonna be up to you. Uh, you know, there is, all right, I kind of think I know what he's saying, you know, because people see like really expressive brushwork, like some people would say a lot of my paintings are very loose, um, expressive brushwork. And there is a line between loose brushwork and sloppy brushwork. And I feel like that line is made if other elements aren't there. You know, you can have really loose brushwork if your value is really dialed in, your uh, your drawing is really dialed in, you know, because the painting can be held together so well with the drawing and the values. Like I've seen some paintings that are just so simple and the brushwork is so loose, but they got the values down so perfectly and the colors down so perfectly that like you don't need, you know, detail or really, you know, rigid um, structure with the brushwork or anything like that. Uh, so I think you just need to be honest with yourself. And if your painting isn't turning out the way you want it, if you're not, 
getting what you like, be honest with yourself and understand what you need to change to make it work. And also a lot of times when you see people that have really loose brushwork, uh, there's a lot more going on than just being really loose with the brushwork. Uh, a lot of times they're loose in certain areas um, or better yet, they're, they get tighter in certain areas, especially if there's a, a focal point. A lot of painters that paint loosely with expressive brushwork will actually tighten their brushwork a little bit more around the focal point of the painting. And you know, that helps draw your eye in if everything else is, you know, loose and expressive. And as you get to the focal point, things get dialed in a little more crisp. Now, don't get this confused with just thinking, oh, I'll just make my focal point have more detail. It's not necessarily about detail, um, as much about uh, edges, I would say, and contrast probably, and a bunch of other things. So think about those things when you're painting, you know, is, your value and your color so good and spot on that you don't need very tight brushwork to communicate what you need to communicate. Hope that answers your question. All right, so that is all the questions for today. Uh, if you have a question, please leave it in the comments section. I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. If you're looking for full painting video tutorials, they are on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.